Here in Lynchburg, Virginia, in plain sight on Pierce Street, are the remnants of one of the most important and forgotten tennis courts in history. The two russet poles that protrude from the ground provide clues that this was once the setting for something special, where African-Americans such as Althea Gibson and Arthur Ashe honed their skills during the 1950s and 60s as they strived to break the color barrier in the sport. They all did this under the vision of Dr. Robert Johnson, the original Dr. J, he was a practicing physician and former college football player who aptly earned the nickname Whirlwind. One man on a mission to revive this piece of forgotten history is his grandson, Lange Johnson. Lange, tell me first, why Whirlwind? Why, how did he get that nickname? He was a outstanding halfback in college at Lincoln University, and one of his key attributes was when he hit the line of scrimmage, he would twirl around like a whirlwind. But, you know, interestingly enough, his life took on that same sort of edict in terms of everything he did in the sport and medicine. He was constantly trying to figure out the best way to get through and finish. Why did Whirlwind Johnson love tennis? He wasn't that good, was he? No, he was not the best player, but he was, he was really good at picking good partners. And so uh, he fell in love with the sport early and took a look around and saw that from a sport perspective, it wasn't integrated. So he bought a lot next to his home in Lynchburg and installed a tennis court and started creating opportunities for him to learn the game as well as bring others into the game early on. Althea Gibson was a project when she first came to Dr. Johnson's attention in 1946 from the rough and tumble streets of Harlem. But she also had great potential. Althea thrived in this new structured environment and by 1950 became the first African American to receive an invitation to play the most prestigious tournament in the country, the U.S. Nationals. The real experiment, the real goal initially was to just break the color line. The fact that she got into U.S. Nationals was key. But then my grandfather pivoted and said, well, we should win one of these next. So he organized a junior development program in 51 and moved the sport forward. There was just one court? How did he get those kids playing on just one court? Obviously the top tier kids would get access to the main court, but we also utilized public courts in uh, Lynchburg that were available. How big a deal was it to be on that court? It was the most vicious but polite tennis that you could ever see, but people really fought tooth and nail to impress him. This was during the Jim Crow era sure. of this country. Oh yeah, well there are a number of obstacles and stories where they were traveling in the deep south or elsewhere and they ran into some real problems. One example, they were playing a tournament and they ended up in the middle of the night, one of the players had an ax uh, that was split through the door, posted a note in the door that said, you guys need to leave. And Dr. J said, don't worry, I've got you covered. We're gonna stay put and we're gonna win this tournament. I wish that wasn't such a foreign story, but about 60 miles away from us now in Charlottesville, all this stuff is still happening. Incredible. If he were still teaching kids how to play tennis and how to live their lives, what would he be saying about what's going on in our country now still? Uh, he would be very disappointed, but during his life, he knew that you had to be above board. Don't, don't react to the violence, even on court. Don't make any calls that would even imply that you had taken a point from your opponent. Make sure you give them the benefit of the doubt 100% of the time. I think ultimately it made them stronger and better competitors. And people. And people. The Martin Luther King prophet of tennis was, that was his edict. He really wanted to make sure that people got their message across. And the best way to do that was conduct yourself professionally, but also win, which was important. Why was that so important? Because if we won, people would start paying attention. In 1956, the world paid attention as Althea reached the mountaintop, becoming the first African-American male or female to ever win a major title. She won the French Open and she continued to dominate the game for the next two years, winning back-to-back -back U.S. Nationals and Wimbledon Championships. There's a telegram that uh, she sent to my grandfather in 57 after winning Wimbledon. And she said, this is yours as well, because without your belief in me and your confidence and your willingness to support me, this would have never happened. Dr. Johnson's success with Althea made his court in Lynchburg the epicenter for African-American tennis, as over 200 lives were forever changed through this program, including a scrawny nine-year-old named Arthur Ashe. Arthur wouldn't have been there unless his father knew this was the go-to guy. If you want to get your game to the level where you can play on the world tennis stage, this is the guy you want to have. Ultimately, he adopted the program pretty much perfectly and flourished as a result. Jeannie Ash said that 
Arthur Revere, your grandpa. Mm. He set such a high bar and such a standard for so many players to live by that he was remembered in that way. He knew exactly what people needed, great teaching, great equipment, and they needed a code of conduct they could live by to excel on the court. And he provided all of that. Dr. Johnson lived to see Arthur win his first major at the 1968 U.S. Open, but passed away four years later. And finally, in 2009, Whirlwind was granted his rightful place in history when he was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. The key mantra of my grandfather's life was, it can be done. No integration in big-time tennis, it can be done. No state-of-the-art tennis facilities and equipment for African-American players, absolutely can be done. The USTA has also partnered with the Whirlwind Foundation in a movement to restore the original court so it can be used once again for future generations. So this is the spot. This is where Althea Gibson honed her skills as well as Arthur and uh, transformed the game. The things that happened in this city on that backyard tennis court are absolutely incredible. We would be completely remiss if we allowed that property and the court to die on the vine. So we're committed to not only preserving the, the court and the home, but also install a museum so people can come and see exactly what it was like to play in this environment and be on that court. I wonder what Dr. Johnson would think seeing Arthur Ashe Stadium where Serena Williams and Venus Williams play. Well, I think he would have to be extremely proud of that happening. The fact that Arthur's name would end up on that stadium would mean to him that he had accomplished what he set out to do, break the color barrier in the sport.